Our neighboring planet only sits 34 million miles away, so what's the big holdup? When it comes to interplanetary destinations beyond Earth and our solar system, there aren't many fantastic possibilities in terms of weather, climate, or even just solid ground. Our nearby neighbor, Venus, is so hot that we perish before reaching solid ground. Pluto breaks the thermometer in the opposite direction, negative 240 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter are primarily formed of deadly gases that would kill humans. Mars is the only planet in our solar system that has a livable orbit. Humans have walked on the moon and delivered spacecraft that have traveled to Pluto and even exited the boundaries of our solar system after more than half a century. We've even landed several spacecraft on Mars, including NASA's Perseverance rover and China's Zorong rover, which is presently traveling about the planet and broadcasting back photographs and other useful data. So, why haven't we visited Mars yet? According to NASA, several challenges must be addressed before sending a human expedition to the planet, including technological advancements and greater knowledge of the human body, psyche, and how humans may adjust to living on another planet. According to Michelle Rucker, chief of NASA's Human Mars Architecture Team. These challenges may be summed into three primary issues. The first obstacle is just the sheer distance. At its closest point, Mars is approximately 34 million miles or 55 million kilometers away. However, the distance to Mars is not always constant. Because the Earth and Mars orbit the Sun at different distances and speeds, there are some more favorable times to travel between the two, especially when the goal is not to only go to Mars rapidly but also to get back. The second issue is the human problem. Aside from technology, we need to know how humans, creatures that evolved to dwell in the Earth's atmosphere with Earth's gravity, will manage with living in low gravity, close proximity, intimate environment conditions on spacecraft for several months of the journey. Work on this has been going on for a while, whether it's investigating how astronauts living on the International Space Station deal with the isolation and low gravity up there, or how they deal with returning to Earth. The different lunar missions have also shown how the astronauts manage with the low-gravity environment there. And finally, getting to Mars' orbit is merely the first step. The other hurdle is landing on Mars safely, but not necessarily in one piece. According to Sheehy, NASA is working on building an inflatable decelerator, similar to a reverse parachute, that would shield and slow the landing vehicle as it penetrated the atmosphere. To land the spacecraft would require something akin to supersonic retropulsion, basically bottom-mounted jets that reverse the huge push sufficiently to bring the plane safely to the ground. To overcome the difficulty of building this, NASA intends to launch such a device into our orbit and then land it back on Earth to test its functionality. With all of that stated, what if there was a speedier method to get there, one that didn't need 21 months? What if there was a better method one that didn't squander time and money on such a long journey. Many scientists believe that traveling to Mars does not have to take as long or as much of a toll on the body. Instead of 21 months, why not go to Mars in a matter of days? If this mode of space travel proves to be viable, it will completely alter our perception of life on Mars. Engineers on the Earth are developing new propulsion solutions for the first human journeys to Mars as NASA's Perseverance rover approaches the red planet. NASA is investigating two types of nuclear propulsion systems, nuclear electric and nuclear thermal. Nuclear electric propulsion systems use propellants far more effectively than chemical rockets, but provide less thrust. They employ a reactor to create energy, which positively charges gas propellants like xenon and krypton and pushes the ions out through a thruster, propelling the spaceship forward. Nuclear electric propulsion systems, which use low thrust effectively, may accelerate spacecraft for lengthy periods of time and can propel a Mars trip for a fraction of the fuel used by high thrust systems. Nuclear thermal propulsion technology produces strong thrust while using half the fuel of chemical rockets. The heat from the reactor is transferred to a liquid propellant via the system. The heat transforms the liquid into a gas, which expands via a funnel to create propulsion and move the spaceship. You can only imagine how much thrust a nuclear-powered rocket would create. Scientists believe that a rocket like this will deliver twice as much thrust per unit of propellant as the current propeller system can. It's also worth noting that Elon Musk is working on a vehicle that might revolutionize space travel. The Starship, as it will be known, will be a reusable transport system capable of taking up to 100 people to Mars. 
Musk is planning to build roughly 40 cabins in the payload area near the front of the upper stage for long-haul voyages to Mars and back, which might take up to nine months each way. This is a shorter route than the 12 months it would normally take, but if NASA can nail this, we will be able to reach the red planet in 90 days. NASA is requesting basic reactor design concepts for a nuclear thermal propulsion system in collaboration with the Department of Energy, DOE. The authorities intend to sponsor several initiatives to investigate various techniques. Subsequent contracts will create more precise reactor designs and construct basic testing hardware. For more than 60 years, NASA has been interested in nuclear thermal propulsion. The new hardware design and development phase, which will be undertaken through a call for proposals issued on February 12, 2021, will expand on previous work to mature critical pieces of a nuclear thermal propulsion system. Only robotic explorers have been to Mars thus far, with no need to return to Earth. Waiting for perfect planetary alignment for the return voyage would require people to spend more than a year on Mars, extending the round-trip mission to more than three years. NASA, in collaboration with DOE, is developing and testing novel fuels for space applications that employ low-enriched uranium to investigate how they operate in the harsh heat and radiation settings required for nuclear thermal propulsion. NASA is collaborating with DOE industry and universities to test nuclear fuel samples in research reactors at Idaho National Laboratory's Transient Reactor Test, or TREAT, facility and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Nuclear Reactor Laboratory. At Marshall test sites, the team is also conducting non-nuclear testing in simulated reactors. While the majority of the engine runs at low temperatures, materials in direct contact with the reactor fuel must be able to withstand temperatures over 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. NASA and DOE have been collaborating with the industry to establish a feasible strategy, and the industry will now build early prototypes to address this challenge. With prior events such as Three Mile Island, Fukushima, and most notably Chernobyl, we can see why many people are skeptical of this mode of transportation. The death toll from these three incidents is less than the number of Americans who die from smoking each year. But the truth is that nuclear is far safer than coal and oil. There are several safeguards in place to avoid any kind of radiation leakage or exposure. And for an extra degree of safety, any nuclear-powered ship would rely on an old-fashioned chemical rocket to get out of Earth. Nuclear power would only be used after the ship has departed Earth. But what if there was a more secure way to visit Mars? Another possibility is ion propulsion. These create propulsion by utilizing electricity to accelerate ions charged atoms or molecules. Ion propulsion is already being utilized in orbit to power satellites. When ion engines reach space, they sparkle and, given enough time, they may attain incredible speeds. Ad Astra claims to be working on the Vasimir, a sort of thruster that employs radio waves to ionize and heat a propellant followed by a magnetic field to accelerate the resultant soup of particles, the plasma. Vasimir is intended to create significantly greater thrust than a normal ion engine. The wind driving a sailed boat has been compared to ion engines. This type of propellant will undoubtedly complete the task faster than a regular chemical rocket. Spacecraft powered by this propellant can travel at speeds of up to 200,000 miles per hour, or 90,000 meters per second. According to the physics underlying this groundbreaking notion, it might be the best form of transit throughout our solar systems. If we can reduce the time it takes to get to Mars and other planets, we will enter a new golden era of space travel. What are your thoughts on the various methods stated in this video? And do you believe that nuclear-powered rockets will bring us to Mars anytime soon? Please let us know by leaving a comment in the space below.